Hi everyone, Sabrina from Campbell's Freedom Farm. We have cleaned out the park and we're going to start landscaping the first part of the park. And this is one of the favorites for me. It's the Rose Garden. We're going to do a lot of companion planting. And people say, well, you can't companion plant with roses. They're really finicky. And I'm going to show you how you can. So first, I want to show you the beds. I don't mulch anything around the roses because they really like a high nitrogen so i just use compost in this section so next i'm going to put epsom salt this is an all-time favorite that you could actually spray on the foliage and i do every every three weeks just around the base of each one over the year but I'm gonna see what happens also roses like high nitrogen what I'm gonna companion plant with doesn't like fertilizer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some coffee grounds to start because one it it keeps bugs away or it's supposed to help so I'm gonna also put some of that I forgot that there Now, I use a lot of coffee grounds. I hate pests unless they're beneficial. It's like you need to put a sign out. But um, I don't think they read though. What I'm going to companion plant with, if you could zoom in here is lamb's ears. Lamb's ears are total opposite. They don't like the fertilizer. Um, they both do like compost a little bit though. Um, but what I like about them is I do a variety of colors and I'm going by texture. People say, oh, let's match the color. Let's all do white or whatever. That's not how I am. I do the texture. The thorny rose, which has been in history is a sign of love it's really pointy and then you have the lamb's ears that's really soft and the color contrast is great too so what do i do i just fertilize around the roses and i put this and it grows around it um, keeps weeds out it's just stunning what i did though is i edged and i have to add more to it but um I just love the rose. Something you didn't know about the rose probably is that the oldest rose that they found was a fossil 35 million years old. I didn't realize the rose was that old. You could see why it was in the Bible as one of the three roses. Okay, here's some lamb's ears I dug up from somewhere else. All you have to do, they're really easy. Oh, forgot my gloves. Um, just put them into the soil. It's really soft here. I already dug everything. And the minute I say that, it's not. We're supposed to get some rain. And I keep them a little away from it. Thank you, camera woman. <laughs> These will spread like crazy. After four years, you could divide the clumps, which I'm right at three years for some of these, so I didn't want to overdo it. Now here, we have some sage, and that's a different texture as well. Similar color to the lamb's ears, but it's going to have, you know, the purple-blue flowers, and it's going to just spread over. I bet you guys can't guess what the most expensive rose is. 
I should almost not tell you the answer. In 2006, David Austin, Christian, his rose Juliet, it took 15 years to make and five million dollars. Obviously that's not in my rose bed. <laughs> but um, David Austin roses could be bought at Lowe's and other department stores. And um, I think their colors are incredible. And they seem very hardy. I only have one of them. video too. I want to say some more people brought pictures, well emailed some pictures of their kids and their seeds and stuff. So please send your videos. one and then I'm going to have to dig up some. I don't want to get too close because this folds over both ways. So I'm going to in the video here I'm going to have to dig some more over there. I let it seed everywhere and do it. But let me take you through a walk through the whole thing and see how beautiful it is but um please subscribe like and share thank you i just want to show the whole setup here so i do a lot of yellow and peach roses and white and I do a few things to throw it off. So I have some blue bachelor's buttons that sit in here in the spring till the roses bloom. But it really turned out nicely. Now, after three weeks come and that starts blooming, what I'm gonna do, because roses are very susceptible to a lot of diseases, I use the Bears Advance. It's a rose and flower care. So it fertilizes insect control, disease control, all one application. You do it every six weeks and it works amazing. And um, again, I put coffee grounds in here every year and compost every year. And um, then the lamb's ears kind of keep it from drying out too much. Roses love water, which is funny because they hate wet feet. So it's like really give them a lot of water, but then let them dry out. So, so this is, um, we really love our animals in them. Um, when we lose one, they're family members. They get buried and they get a rock or a rose or something. So this one actually is one of our wolves. His name was Boss. When I first bought the farm, I had one dog, Bernice. And um, the Humane Society said, oh, you live on a farm? Somebody turned in these baby wolves. They're in the hole. We have to go rescue them because the mom got killed. You qualify. So the stories I have on that one. So anyway, this is Sabrina. Um, Stay tuned for all the other pictures and go get your roses. Spring is the time to plant them. So it's really a wonderful flower and one of the oldest. Bye.